Hello and thank you for joining me here at Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura. In today's video, I am talking about my book collection and specifically why I collect these books and why they're worth it, I guess, because I've had people comment on like my Folio Society book collection videos or my Easton Press ones. And they'll ask like for specifics, like what makes these books so special? Like what is it about this publishing house that is worth collecting? And why are these books more expensive than your average book that you could buy at a regular bookstore? And my response has like, I didn't know the specifics. So I was like, honestly, I don't know what makes them different aside from the fact that with Folio Society, they have illustrations. And so <laughs> I feel like a little kid where I'm like, oh, I wanna read a book that has pictures in it. <laughs> but that really is what it comes down to as far as Folio Society in particular. I mean, other editions too, when they commission an artist to make drawings specifically for that book. I just love that so much. I love flipping through the pages and looking at the books and reading a book is better when you have pictures to look at, right? <laughs> Which I will say, with my book buying, I'm definitely like a collector. I don't, because I don't read these physical copies that I own. 99% of the time, I don't buy a book unless I have read it. So I've read all of these books, but I haven't actually read any of these physical copies because I do the majority of my reading on my Kindle or on Audible or on through Libby, the Libby app, because I am not a fan of reading physical books. Like they're heavy, you have to use both hands. You worry about getting them dirty or getting water on them. And you can adjust the font size on a Kindle. You can adjust the brightness. It's just so much easier in every single way. <laughs> so I am all about e-readers. I'm trying to remember the last time I read a physical book. I know last year I read, there were some physical books that I read, but as of this year, every single book I've read has either been on my Kindle or it's been through audio, like Audible, an audiobook. So I don't buy a book unless I've read it and I loved it. And then when I buy the book, I just don't buy any random edition. I buy Folio Society or Easton Press or Suntuck Press, or I buy the first edition copies, which are more valuable. And so I'm all about collecting the valuable books collecting the rare books, the special books, the ones that appreciate with age. And today I'm gonna to talk about why these ones are special, which I mean, it all comes down really to the idea of beauty for beauty's sake. You know, they used to publish books and it was very, you know, these books had a purpose and they're not for beauty, they're, you know, for learning and for reading. So why make it look good? Cause that's not the point of it. And so at some point there was a movement that happened where they just started publishing books that were more detailed and they put more time into it and they made them beautiful just for beauty's sake. So Oscar Wilde was very big on this and I totally agree. I love having beautiful things around me, whether it's plants or scenery or paintings or books. I love beautiful things and it makes life more enjoyable. And so that's a big reason why I collect these specific books is because they're beautiful and I love beauty for beauty's sake. <laughs> Same with tattoos, right? Like I got a camera, like an old school film camera tattoo on my back when I was like 18. And people would ask me like, oh, what's the tattoo mean? Thinking it had some deep meaning. And I'd be like, oh, I like movies. <laughs> so I got a movie camera. There were some people that were like, like they judged me because it didn't have a deep meaning, but I like disagree, obviously. <laughs> if you have a tattoo just because it's like, oh, I mean, I like books. So I got a tattoo of a book or I just thought it was pretty. I just want a pretty tattoo. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's wonderful. I will say I have my sunflower tattoo. I got it in black and white. I wanted it in color, but then she convinced me to do black and white. And now I'm wishing it was in color because again, this one I got because I like sunflowers and I thought it would be a pretty tattoo to have. And I'm wishing I had done something bigger and more colorful with it. So that would just be like this beautiful tattoo. I mean, it's still, it's kind of like a cute tattoo with how it is now, but anyway, I'm all about beauty for beauty's sake and having beautiful things to look at and beautiful things in life make life more beautiful. <laughs> but to talk about more specifics about what make these books so special. So for starters, all of these books, Folio Society, Easton Press, Suntuck Press, Cemetery Dance, any special edition book that costs more money, it is because it is on high quality acid-free paper. So there are certain books that are printed on cheaper paper. And so as it ages, like the paper ages poorly. For example, I have this edition of Picture of Dorian Gray, which is from World War II era. And it even has this thing at the start that talks about how it is printed on cheaper paper because World War II was happening and they needed supplies for other things. And so it has this whole thing about how we're gonna still print books, but the paper quality isn't as good. And as you can see, like this paper quality just has not aged well and it's faded 
and it just looks older because the quality isn't very good. But then I have other books like this one, which is even older. This one is from the early 1900s and the paper like still has its color for the most part. But my special edition books, the paper quality is like a, an even higher quality. And when you touch it, you can tell it is like high quality paper that will last forever. So they just last longer and including the binding as well. So all of these high quality books are sewn binding, which is stronger and longer lasting and sturdier rather than being glued in. And I have an example. So this is a book where the binding is glued in, if you can kind of see, like there's not much to see, but you can kind of see that it's glued in there versus being sewn in where you can see like it's sewn in there. And so again, more high quality and will last longer. Also, some of these books are either cloth bound or genuine leather bound, which again, higher quality. This all comes down to just higher quality products, which help create a more beautiful book as well as a longer lasting book. So these books are not going to be falling apart. They are going to last for a very long time and be very high quality. And so I mentioned Easton Press used genuine leather. There is Franklin Library, which looks similar, but Franklin Library, some other books are like, not genuine leather. So it's not all the same when it comes to Franklin Library. However, Easton Press is all genuine leather, which just feels so nice. And again, higher quality. Plus Easton Press has the 22 karat gilded edges, which I absolutely love, sewn in pages, and it has this pretty ribbon as well. And I just love the way these look on the shelf. I want to buy more, especially more deluxe Easton Press, which regular Easton Press, like the paper is higher quality and the way it's printed is higher quality but they don't commission illustrations. So the drawings, if like this one is not illustrated, but if you have an Easton Press that does have drawings, they're not unique to that Easton Press. So I don't like Easton Press quite as much because of that, unless you get a deluxe edition, which my Frankenstein is a deluxe Easton Press. And again, that one is commissioned. They commissioned an artist to make drawings that are unique to that edition. And a lot of these books also come with slip cases, as you can see, you know, like here, this slip case doesn't have a design, but it helps protect the book and keep it safer. And I just love a book with a slip case. Suntup Press, I only have two, but they are very sturdy slip cases. And something else I look for when I collect books is if they are numbered editions. For example, I have this limited first edition copy of Cold Mountain. So you have the regular first edition copy, which honestly was kind of boring. <laughs> and this one, it's not like it's the most beautiful cover. I mean, it's very simple and there is a beauty to simplicity, but this one is a numbered edition signed by the author. So there are only 500 copies of this in the world. And I own copy number 436 signed by the author. So that as well, that makes it valuable is when it is this limited edition, which Suntup Press has numbered edition, Easton Press Deluxe are numbered, but Folio Society are not numbered. Like if they have an edition that's selling well, they are just will keep reprinting it. So they do not have that limited edition quality. They're not numbered like some other books are. So that's really why I like collecting these books and why they're valuable is they are sturdy and they're beautiful and they're long lasting. And I mean, some like Folio Society, like I said, they aren't like limited editions, but still over time you can sell them for more than what you bought them for. And so I like that as well. I kind of think of it as an investment, not that I'm planning on selling any of these anytime soon, but potentially I could sell them. And if people are willing to pay a good price, I can make a fair amount of money. But I also just love that when so much time and so much detail is taken into creating these editions, you know, which Paul Suntup started Suntup Press in 2016, and he really just wanted to create beautiful books that honored the story within. And so I love that too, where, you know, the author, the writer puts so much time and so much of themselves into these beautiful stories, these beautiful books. And I just love an edition that really takes so much time to create a beautiful edition to honor the story. And when they commission artists to make drawings for this book, like, I think that would be so cool too, to be an author and see someone paint scenes from your book. I think that would just be so awesome. So yeah, it's really honoring art in all its forms, maybe not all its forms, but you get the visuals to go along with the reading. And yeah, I just love how they look on my shelves. They're just so beautiful. That is why I think they are worth collecting. I know this wasn't maybe as like as specific, like with how the printing pro process printing process goes. I did look into um, like letterpress printing because that is an old school way of printing that I guess at this point is considered more special and more higher quality. Although it's not like it's, 
The way they print now, it's not like it's lesser quality, but there is something special about a letterpress printing, which is the old way we printed stuff. And I don't think any of the books I have are letterpress aside from my old Folio Society because Folio Society was started in like 1947 and they started out doing letterpress printing and they were one of the last publishing houses to stop doing letterpress. So around like the late 70s, I believe, is when they stopped doing that. But I have one that's letterpress printed and it looks the same to me. So I I don't, I don't know what's so special about letterpress if I'm being honest, but I do know some of the Suntet books are letterpress printed, but again, none of mine are as far as I could tell, they didn't say they were. So I guess that wraps it up on why these books are worth collecting in my opinion and why I love them and why I seek out these beautiful books, these limited edition books. These books, I mean, they truly are special editions. Like they are just so special and so beautiful and I am so happy to have them on my shelves. And I mean, I'm proud of my first editions as well because a first edition, first printing is special, but there's something about, and I know a lot of time goes into creating like the covers and stuff on the first editions, but a lot more time is taken when someone is creating these illustrations for this book and it's more of a uh, collaborative effort. Anyway, I feel like I'm kind of rambling, but that is why I think these books are worth collecting. And I want to ask you what your favorite publishing house is. I know a lot of my subscribers are book collectors. So what is your favorite and why? My favorite, I mean, I own the most Folio Society, but I love the way Eastern Press looks on the shelf, but Eastern Press Deluxe and Suntup Press, I think like my Eastern Press Frankenstein Deluxe and my Eastern Press Misery are two of the most intricate, ornate books I own, but I also really love Folio Society, obviously. Anyway, so let me know down below in the comments and if you are not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and you can watch all of my other book collection videos I have. I have three different Folio Society videos. I have Eastern Press videos. I have a video showing off Frankenstein Deluxe. I have a video showing off Misery by Suntup Press. So yeah, I love my books and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.